and we're live happy sunday folks y'all how's it going it is august 8th and we are just about getting ready for another live painting session with yours truly um i'm just gonna give you guys a couple of moments to kind of come on in and then uh, we can start our little painting day together. So I'm just gonna make sure that I can see your comments well, uh, which I can. And just adjusting screens and just making sure that I am not going to get interrupted. So I can see you guys slowly trickling in. Okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, really quickly opening up. It is Sunday, so happy Sunday. I sent out an email to everyone who signed up for my emails. You normally get an email every Sunday kind of reminding you, hey, um, I'm going live. See you online if you want to join in. And uh, in the email, I let you guys know a couple of things uh, besides the past uh, videos, the videos that we did for this past week. Um, there will be a change to Sunday lives. Sunday lives are now going to be, hi Leia, are now going to be starting September onwards. It'll be every alternate Sundays. So it gives you guys a little bit of a break. So if you want to catch up to the videos that I put out and kind of just take your time doing it, because I know life can be busy, especially it's going to be back to school. Leah, I'm looking at you. You're going to be back to school as well. Uh, hi, Ellie. Hi, Gail. Hi, Carol. Um, so uh, trying something new. And also, I will be offering an interactive class each month. Uh, and it will happen through Zoom. This month, last month, we uh, I started off as a trial just to see how it would go, what the response would be. I did roses. Uh, I did two classes. One class was supposed to target people in the Americas. And then the other class was supposed to target people more far off to the east who would like to attend something but weren't able to because of time difference. And it kind of was really well received. So I am going to continue this offering two classes, uh, one for with the timing that suits us on this side and then the second for the timing for the east. Uh, in the email we are going to be doing, I mentioned, uh, loose peonies. So if anyone is interested, check out the email or just follow me on Instagram and you will see the updates coming in and you can sign up for your class. And uh, outside of that, hi Patty, hi Zanette, hi Simone, hi Susan, hey Bobby. Hey, Patsy. Oh, I love how you guys are all rolling in. Um, yes, outside of that, I am getting ready for another uh, watercolor experience with me, and that is happening on the 13th, which is this Friday, and it's going to be high tea and watercolor at a rose farm. And it is the rose farm that first inspired me about this whole idea of doing a class or having sessions during the summer uh, in amidst nature, whether it's a vineyard or a rose farm. And this rose farm was the one that kind of sparked that idea. So I'm excited to be doing that. Uh, response has been really good. Uh, I've limited the numbers to 15 people in the class. I know none of you are local, but if you were local, you probably would have come uh, and attended. So 15 people per class. And uh, this way, it's a great one-on-one -on -one session, interactive session, but then people also get to partake in some really yummy uh, local baked goodies and then we have some exquisite teas so for all you tea drinkers I'm gonna keep you guys posted about what kind of teas we have um, and that's that that's pretty much all the things I kind of put in the email summarizing for you guys here face to face so let's get into this Sunday's uh, painting shall we my uh, I put it out there more as a challenge for myself that this month is going to be dedicated to scenic views and so uh, we've already tackled one scenic view, which was what I had done at the vineyard last Sunday. So if you've missed that, and uh, actually let me flip my 
flip my view here so you can see. And then today we are going to be tackling another one, but I'm incorporating some florals in there because you guys know I love my florals. And uh, the other thing was that, uh, yeah, the video tutorial for last week on Thursday was also a, uh, was also a scenic view. So I am actually, I've actually decided to kind of divvy up my sheets of etcher paper. I'll more on that later. But yes, so we did, we did the, this one, the sun setting kind of image was last Sunday's live. This was uh, the video tutorial for this past week. I kept it simple. It was just simple and therapeutic to kind of do and blend the colors. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And we are going to be doing another one today, this time with some florals. And I am just going to make sure that I'm not missing any comments as I am telling you guys what we're doing. Hey, MJ. Hey, Deborah. Yeah, Leah, I'm definitely going to, I have to kind of find out if I can get a photographer for this event because I think the pictures are going to be stunning. We got some really cute vintage teacups, not to go back onto this whole high tea topic, but I think it's going to be stunning. Hi, Ute from Germany. Uh, Ellie, yes, absolutely, because the Rose Farm does intend to kind of make this an ongoing event. So uh, we'll def like keep track of the schedule or whatever I post on Instagram, and you should be able to get a heads up soon enough. Yes, I know. I've been getting some great reviews about the, the idea or the concept. So let's see. Loose florals in a floral farm. Like you can't, you can't not want to do that unless you're not into florals. Okay, so moving on to today. So for today, I'm just going to tell you really quickly what colors I am using. I am envisioning something where we've got the nice skyline in the background and we've got some nice florals in the front. Very similar to what, what I did last Sunday, which was, let me just flip it over. This concept here, except instead of silhouettes, we're going to use some colors and use some of the techniques that we've kind of done in previous videos by me. So uh, if you've done the pampas grass video, we're going to kind of use that concept, the heather because of the colors, uh, that sort of thing. If you've done the Hello Clarice G challenge, the blending that we're doing, we're kind of pretty much taking concepts, no, uh, taking techniques from those videos and putting this together today. Uh, so keep that in mind. Okay, so for my colors, we are going to be using Carmen, Violet, Bright Blue, Green, Umber, Yellowish Green, Yellow Ochre, Mars Brown. I found when you, when you blend Mars Brown in with I, I believe it's the Carmen. You get like a nice mauve color. So I want to try that today with you guys. Let's just see um, if I get around to doing it. Because I usually tell you guys what I'm going to do. And then I get swept away in the moment. And then I forget. It's a lot. All right. So putting this aside, I'm going to walk you through the items that I'm using. So I'm using the Etcher sketchbook. And it is the hot press. And uh, I am using for brushes, we're gonna be using, I really liked how this flat brush kind of gave me some really great interesting results when I did the sky in Thursday's video. So I'm gonna use this again. I've used the mop brush to do skies and such, and I didn't quite like it as much, but I'm gonna keep it handy just in case I am inspired to use it. Um, Yes, then for brushes, we're going to be using like for finer details. I'm just going to keep the mop brush one handy. We'll see if I use it or not. But these two I'm definitely going to be using. It is the silver black velvet number four and then the Escada number two. I have my palettes ready by Lisi Arts and we are good to begin. Oh, I got my water ready and also paper towel off to the side. So we're pretty much ready to start. I'm just going to move this over and I'll do the, I'll use this section to do our little um, scenery today. Okay, so first things first, I think what I want to do, I'm just going to walk you guys through how this is going to 
uh, look so you have an idea of what you're doing and you can compensate for this as we're kind of going along so we're gonna have like maybe about the first quarter a little more than a quarter ish uh, of the sky um, and then we'll have like a horizon of blue just about there and then from then on we'll do like a very light fade from like a light green going down to like a darker green and I'll walk you through that I think we'll blend in a little bit of the uh, ochre in there as well and then towards the bottom we're gonna go in and get some nice darker strokes of green so we get that blend so let's walk and start through this process together so I'm gonna use the flat brush to do my water just wash that off uh, I will use the um, yep yeah, let's use the Da Vinci number four to put in some of the paint some of the darker hues and uh, for the sky I am going to use bright blue so I'm going to use the Da Vinci get some of the bright blue and I'm going to mix it onto my palette get a little bit more notice how the brush looks like it's almost dry at this point but it's got a lot of water on there already this is I think I'm not yet used to using the number four I'm very well versed with using the number one so it's interesting how that kind of changes as you like even with the size it's it makes it like a completely different brush Okay, so that I want the consistency to be about like this. I think this is like a 2080, maybe even like, yeah, I think it's like a 2080. And then uh, I'm going to get, um, I think we should introduce one more blue, uh, just to give it like a little bit of a, like, you know, I like to use two different tones. So I'm just gonna keep the turquoise. Let me just see how this pans out for me. I'm going to get the flat lay brush and I notice I'm holding the number four as well. I'm going to get some of this blue first. And I'm just going to start damping this area. And you can see it's very light. You can barely see the color. I even need a little bit more just to kind of get in some using some of my the side uh, strokes of this brush and now that I have that I'm gonna go in for the rest of the strokes with my mop brush and we're gonna go in and just kind of complete it up to like this area right here I'll make this the horizon why not I'm just moving some of the color around and I think for this horizon, let's use the number four and get some of this turquoisey color that I'm kind of having right here. Or indigo, whichever you want to use. Just a different blue, really. And I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of a stroke or a line here at the bottom. Maybe even mix the two together directly from the, the color pans. And I just want a very clear, thin horizon line happening. So you can see me kind of blending both the colors directly using the brush from the pan. We're taking the color directly from the pan. Giving me this nice, dark, solid line. Right now I'm going to go back in with this brush and what I want to do is just blend in some of the blue that we have just to give it like additional shapes and variations happening in there. 
I'm just moving around the blue, leaving some areas that are like white, so leaving them light in color so we've got a nice variation of sky. And I'm just adding additional water to this hor horizon here at the edge, just at the edge, because I want that color to kind of blend in with the swoops of uh, blue that we just added in. And then I'm just taking some of the blue directly from there. Using the mop brush, I'm just going to add some additional darker strokes at the top. And this, what this is going to do is it's going to allow this darker blue that we're using here to kind of blend in and just give us some additional um, pretty looking uh, gradient shapes that can also translate into looking like clouds. And this is why I kind of love uh, the whole concept of loose painting because you're not sitting there trying to mimic an actual sky. You're kind of going in, allowing the beautiful colors to kind of just do their thing. And clouds are so pretty to kind of paint in using any medium really because you're able to kind of, there can be like straight lines, there can be fluffy clouds, you have all these different variations of uh, skies that you can kind of do. So notice I'm still leaving some white space in there. Now the next thing I want to do is just go in, hi Cindy, hi J.R. Ewing from Germany. Okay, I'm going to go in with the number four and I am just going to go ahead and sweep out some of the color. And what this is going to do is it's going to give us some shape. So I'm just kind of going in and trying to take out some extra color to kind of just give us these water stains that will kind of translate into looking like more of a cloud or just additional details happening in the sky. And you don't have to do it if you don't want to do it. I'm just kind of, I want to use this technique a little bit more in my painting, so I am doing it. And I want to see what kind of results I get as well. So I'm kind of also experimenting as I go along here. And maybe more at the bottom here because I'd like to be slightly more obvious with the fading into the horizon look. Now you might not see it. I don't know if you can see what I am doing as I am kind of shaving off some of the color with the stroke using this brush, but when it dries up, you'll see more of the detail. You're literally just kind of taking color off and then dabbing it onto your paper towel. I'm just going to smoothen this out just a bit more give it some fluff before we kind of move on to the bottom half. And at this point, if you want to put something in the horizon, you know, now is the time to kind of do that because this area is nice and damp. But I am going to leave my horizon clear and leave it plain as is. So yeah, we're going to move on. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, we're going to start from here and we're going to wet this area or dampen this area again and we are going to use this time a mixture of some of the uh, yellowish green and some of the ochre so i will use let me use the mop brush number one to get some of this color happening okay so getting some of my green i'll just mix it into the blue that i already have I'll put this on here so you guys can see that happening and then I'm going to get some of the ochre
Okay, so I like how this green looks and I think it will complement the blue that we have really well. So again, I'm going in with the flat brush first and I am going to get like a nice swoop of green or light color first happening. So getting my flat brush, making sure that I've taken off most of the blue, dabbing it onto my paper towel and then getting a little bit of the green dipping back into water because I want it to be light. I'm going to go ahead and just start applying water to dampen this area. And then I'm just making sure I'm not touching... Actually, it's okay if you touch a little bit of the... Uh, of the area there, the horizon. Now I'm going in and getting more of the green that we have. And I'm just going to go to town and just kind of dampen this area nicely. I'm leaving that blend of light to dark, just using the side of my brush to kind of add in some additional strokes. I'll get a little bit more of this and get some of the blue and mix that in. And then some of the ochre, just using this brush itself to get like a nice baby green kind of look. And then just going in and just adding strokes to kind of get the bottom to be nice and blended in, dampening the area more. Adding more here at the bottom. And now what we're going to do for this next step is we're going to take our either the number eight or the mop brush that you have or even the number four, whichever ones you have handy. And we're going to go in and get some colors directly from our little cakes or color cakes or whatever you want to call them. And we're going to do some rough strokes here because it's damp right now. We'll get some really nice blending happening. So I'm going to try some with using the green, the dark green first. So I'm getting damp in the brush, I'm getting some color directly from here. And I'm just going to go ahead and add like strokes that start off thick and then kind of just the whole idea is you want them to look like blending happening within all this green. Try and leave some space that doesn't need a lot of blending. Uh, sorry, that, that's just kind of light in color. Do little linear strokes, like try and mix that up. I'm getting some of the yellow ochre at this point and I'm going to go ahead and just add some additional yellow strokes like in between. And make sure that the bottom is nice and dark so we want the darker strokes to be at the bottom so just like dab at the bottom so you get this whole um, array of different shades of green uh, let's get some of that brown in there as well I have Mars brown here and I'm just gonna add a couple of strokes here and there in between these areas maybe off to the side kind of like giving it like taller views here and there uh, stems now what I'm noticing with this brush is that it's not very thin and so I'm going to revert to my number four and then just use whatever color we have going on here to kind of thin out these lines that we've got here. So we're just kind of trying to add, use the color that we have to kind of have it blend in and look like, hey, here's all these little weedy type florals or uh, not florals, stems coming out. And they don't have to be just in one direction, they could be like haphazard all over, kind of like what we did for last Sunday. 
So swatch out between all the colors that we've mentioned so far. And some of them can be smaller in size, some of them can be larger. The idea is to just get these linear lines blending into our little background before we move on and create some more detail. I'm going to even add some additional areas of dark green. And I'm just using the belly of my brush to kind of smear this color onto this area here. And then all in like an upward direction. So if you get some um, areas looking like dry paint, I think that's stunning and beautiful. You should totally uh, not try and smoothen that out because it adds some nice texture. So love that. We're going to go and get some of the, using the number four, I'm going to get some of the ochre. I think my horizon is a tad bit off kilter, but that's okay. This needs to be a little bit damp. Uh, where's my cake? Here we go. So now you can see the, the linear lines that I have going on, which are supposed to translate into the stems, are looking a little bit thinner but darker because our color is drying up at this point. And you could even switch out to get the number two and get some interesting thinner results. And you're just using the swoop of your hand to kind of add these in. Now, I didn't want to make this too dark because what we're going to do next is, and we'll, we'll enhance the greenery a little bit more later, but I want to go in and add some of the florals at this point. So, who remembers the pampas grass video that I did where I did the stem, I wetted some of the area, and then I went in and I added more detail just by dabbing. So we're going to do that and kind of get the whole heather effect, I guess, like a heather floral. So I'm getting some off my violet. I'm going to mix that in here and I will mix that with the carmine. Um, no, there's no reason I went uh, hot press. I wanted to do a video because I got a lot of flack for not comparing two of the same kind. So I will be doing a video with the hot press and the cold press of uh, Etcher. But I also really like the hot press that I, uh, sorry, the cold press. And I figured let's try, uh, try the hot press as well to kind of see how it, how it is in comparison. And, um, and yeah, I kind of really like it. I know I mentioned, uh, previously that my preference was the cold press with the texture and for the most part it is but over the last few videos that I've done with the hot press I kind of I'm digging maybe it's because it's the scenery or scenic views that we've been doing they kind of look really nice and smooth so maybe it also depends on what sort of what the subject is that you're painting, right? So I'm kind of realizing that as I go along. Okay, all right. So I mixed a version of just the Carmen and then also the Carmen and the Violet over here. And I'm going to start by adding little, uh, little dabs of color into these areas here. Okay, too much, too much color on my brush. Maybe dab it off a little bit. And I want the consistency to be 70-30. And I'm just dabbing, leaving a lot of white space in between. Maybe I'm going to even try and get this thinner. Not so thick. Leave some white space in between because then I'm going to go in. Let's go in with the number two. 
leave some space in between, get some of the purple, add that in while this is still damp and let it blend in with the nice carmine that we just put in. And this is how you get that nice loose effect of colors blending in. You're using two brushes and kind of trailing off by just adding dots at the top. We'll probably even do a splatter later on, but essentially this is the idea. And now we do this pretty much everywhere that we need to add some of these pretty looking flowers, mostly in the areas that are lighter in color, I would say. So I'm just gonna dab them all over, get some even on the side. What I would have liked to do, and if any of you try this video again, or if you're just watching and you're gonna try it, when you try it, while the green is still damp, as soon as you have done the bottom, go ahead and get some of the carmine and kind of blend it in into these areas here. So then you get that nice pink glow as you are enhancing and adding more detail. And that's also a very lovely effect for a loose style of painting, right? The thing is I was busy trying to blend the bottom, but the top's kind of pretty much sorted at this point. Um, and also I'm trying to like walk you guys through it so I didn't fully get to kind of think about that as I was going along. So now I'm just switching out between the two brushes and just adding in some Carmen and then some purple. And I think some I can just add with just adding like just purple so they can be indicative of another sort of flower. and maybe just make them a little thinner not as prominent and the purple because it's nice and dark maybe even make it lower down on our area here now something like this is pretty much all about trying to fill your areas in with indications of florals and leaves and whatnot and again it's I'm showing you the way I am doing it but my hope is that you kind of run with these techniques and kind of do your own thing and uh, make it yours because uh, as I normally like to say don't try and mimic me try and learn the technique or see what I am doing and kind of run with that and create your own and some of you have some beautiful happy mistakes I call them happy mistakes because you initially come and say oh um, I did it wrong and because you're so fixated on looking at mine and trying to get it to look like mine that you fail to see how stunning or beautiful your creation really is so keep please keep that in mind all right, I think this is it for the purpley ones. Let me get some pinky ones just happening at the very top here. And now we're gonna go in with some of the green. Okay, this one is blah. I don't like how this one turned out, but that's okay. Let's add some purple in there. I'm trying to make this one kind of look like it's off to the side. All right, okay, perfect. I am now going to just wash out my brushes, dry them off really quickly, and then we're gonna get some of the green here that I've got. And you could probably even go in with some gouache and add some nice white flowers, guys. I think that would look really nice. I'm gonna use my number two and get some of the green. And using the very fine tip I'm going to add some tiny details into these little guys in the forefront. I'm just adding some little green dots in between these areas here. And I'll even add or create some that look like they're just green strands, I guess you could call it. 
and some kind of hovering around here, just a few and far in between. And again, it gives you, um, trying to give you that impression that there's a lot happening in here more than just the pop of color that you see. There's also some greens blending in. Some poking out from behind. And then we'll go in and add some extending uh, stems to these. And if you feel like you need to mix some of this with the lighter green, just to get another variation of green happening. So then it really makes, gives it more dimension because you've got different colors. It's not just one flat layer of color. You kind of have a bunch of different colors happening. Go ahead and do that. I'm going to add some extensions using this green with the little green stuff that we just painted in. And they don't have to extend all the way down, you can just go like halfway if you want. Give it that illusion that there's other stuff happening in between. Uh, another thing you can mix in with the green to get another variant of color is the another uh, Mars Brow not thing, another color that you can mix in is Mars Brown. That's what I was trying to say. So I'm mixing some of the Mars Brown with the leftover green that I have. And I like how that is also looking because it could also pass for, again, pampas grass or something. And just add some very light details here. Now I really like those, um, whatchamacallit, those those weeds that kind of look like they, they've got flowers at the end and they kind of just like, like turn over so i'm gonna try and add some of those in here maybe using some darker tones and uh possibly go in with some gouache and kind of just add add gouache for white flowers or white buds of those at the end so stay tuned for that uh, but in the meantime i'm just gonna add some tiny little grass-like details here before we move on to doing that bit, okay? All right, so uh, I'm going to mention the um, I'm going to mention where I got the tape in my description as soon as the video is done. This is by a company called Art Artex on uh, on Amazon, and I find them to be fairly inexpensive, and this works really well. Like when I used it for the last few uh, paintings of mine, it ripped off really easily, and there were no leftover marks or anything weird like that so i would definitely check them out if you are in the market looking for um washi tape i think it's called washi tape right yeah so check it out they're called artx just exactly how it's written here a r r t x um okay continuing on let's just do this this is this is where paintings like this get time stakingly long because you're sitting here and you're like oh I want one here oh I want one here and you're kind of going along maybe I should make this like my detail that I normally do later on and then post as a time lapse on Instagram instead of kind of sitting here and just doing this making it extra long you guys can always catch that on my Instagram stories all right, perfect. I'm not going to do more. I think I'll work on it later, just like I mentioned. But you get the idea of adding little grassy bits and adding smears of color here. In between to kind of fill up and make it look like there's a lot happening. And some nice layers going on. So just kind of do that and you're literally trying to make sure that you don't press your brush down as you do this. You just get some color onto your brush 
and you're trying to swoop very carefully so you get thin lines as opposed to thicker lines. And if you get a variation of different kinds of lines, that's totally okay. Um, because, you know, not all the plants are going to be the same thickness. And so give yourself some grace there. Okay, so now let's do the little fancy bits that I was talking about. Um, so I'm going to use a combination of green for these guys. Uh, yeah, I'll make them green and we'll use a little bit of the yellow ochre for the ends of it. And I think the green should make this stand out a fair bit. And if you have a thinner brush than the number two, I would suggest using that. And if you're well skilled with it, okay, I'm going to move my arm this way so I can get some nice little twirly shapes happening. Okay, so let's do one here. And I've just kind of done a sweep to kind of show like a grassy kind of leafy effect and I want this one to kind of go downward this way and this is where we're doing the little bit of a bud so tiny little tendril like details this way will really enhance your painting so this is what we're trying to do here and let's do a couple of these all over the place. Uh, I'll do one happening right here. And for this, let's have it, have this bit at the top here and what I'm going to do is get some of the using my number four I'm going to get some of the uh, pink because notice this is why we left this area white now because now we're going to go in with some of the pink and I'm going to make this look like one of those like black eyed Susans or something like that to just kind of flower out in our open something like that. So we'll do a couple of these, not too many, I think maybe two or three is fine because we've got a lot of the purple happening too. And another idea or suggestion is to kind of go in and maybe even add some uh, some of the um, your metallics if you have any and you want to use them. So that would definitely work as well. Let's do one over here on this end. And I'll try and make this one a lot smaller. Get some of that purple in there so it get, gives it like a two-tone feel. Why not? Get some more of the buds happening and then uh, I think we can kind of wrap it up. Uh, let's do a bud happening over here. And I'm deliberately making them taller than the rest so that they really stand out because like I mentioned I like the detail that they add more so than the other kind of bits that we have going on here but that's just my preference so now I have one looking out this way uh, I'm just making like a thing of grass or like the leaf coming from it at the very top. I'm trying to leave some white space in the bud so it looks a little looser. And 
and then I think your what you need to do at the bottom is just add a whole bunch of blades of grass and stuff like that to kind of really fluff this up and then that would really give it some nice movement and happening feel fuller feel uh, let's see we've got some happening there some here I would even darken some of these areas here so that they pop out more than the tiny florals that we have done over here and uh, it should be good maybe even add yellow for those of you who want to add another color uh, yellow is always pretty okay see this is a really thick line and I don't like how that turned out so I'm gonna have to try and fix this and my fixing strategy is to Flick it away, make it look like grass instead. So mistakes like that happen, guys, and it's okay. Don't sweat the small stuff. We are all prone to doing stuff like this, so and sometimes, you know, people won't even notice until you actually mention it. I'm just adding a couple of thicker blades of grass in other areas so that it doesn't look like it's a one-off. And then just adding some of this. Another bud over there. Perfect. Okay. Great. So this is what that looks like. Uh, I'll just add in some of the some of the purple just into some of these areas here, just kind of like dabbing little dots in and around these guys, giving them a little bit more of a pop, just like on the edges of them just in between as well and this is like layering we're doing a little bit of layering here yeah i figured the mistake would be a good uh real moment for a lot of you guys <laughs> And I like to mention those moments because you know what, like artist, not artist, teacher, not a teacher, amateur, we all are human and we all make mistakes. And there's no shame in admitting it, whether it's in a painting, in real life, own up your mistakes, make sure you want to fix them, if you can fix them, and there's nothing wrong with it. That's just life, guys. So I'm just kind of trying to add some detail to make it stand out and pop a bit more. And then I think uh, we can wrap up. If any one of you have any questions, please let me know in the comments or, or in the chat. And I'm going to try and address them as soon as I get my hand off the sheet of paper here. Now this is like very impressionistic, like uh, all the, the dabs and such. Yes, uh, Cindy, it's so funny you mentioned that because I was actually just thinking that to add one more and make it three. Right on, you guys are listening to me. All right, let's add one more. Let's add it. Oh, and I want to add a stem for this guy here. Have it go down. Uh, 
Um, yes, let's add that one, the third one. Right here. And let's see, I got some of my pink happening, pinky purple. And leave it at that. There we go, we got threes. Okay, last but not least, I am definitely going to go in and add more detail, especially at the bottom, and really make it nice and like darker. But, uh, I don't want to keep this going on for too long. I think you guys got the idea. I am going to get some green on the number four and we're going to do a little bit of a splatter in here. And again, I think the splatter adds some nice detail within over here. So I've got my color mixed up onto the side and I'm going to take another brush and we're going to do a splatter get a little bit of water onto my brush so I can get more splatters happening. You could probably even cover up the top if you don't want the splatters going to the top. Probably should have done that. It's a little bit late right now and I don't have a sheet handy. So I'll just have to go with it. Now if you want different shapes or larger splatter just take a larger brush and continue doing that you can see I got some splatter on the top there but it's okay I like it now I'm just gonna get some water So I'm trying to get some at the top here too. All right, I think that's it. I'm not gonna do any more and we are good. Okay, so this is it. This is our final um, turnout. And like I mentioned, feel free to go ahead and enhance it after this class or this video. Um, I definitely will be and I can't wait to just kind of turn on some music and zen myself out and just go to town on this. So if you want to see what my end result looks like, definitely follow me on Instagram and I will show you, um, hello Clarice G is my handle. So anyone have any questions before I say goodbye and wish you guys a wonderful Sunday, just let me know in here. Uh, hey Judy, I didn't realize Judy was the one asking the question. Um, you're welcome, Simone. You're welcome, Lily. You're welcome, Cindy. Glad you guys are learning so much. Uh, thanks, Leah. Thanks, Deborah. Okay, awesome. I don't think anyone has any questions, so I hope you guys enjoyed the session. Keeping it light, keeping it repetitive, using some of the concepts and uh, techniques we've been using in previous videos. Uh, show me your work, make sure you tag me, and if you like this video and you like work like this, please do consider following me on Instagram and, not Instagram, on uh, YouTube so that you can, uh, you can be notified every time something new comes. All right, guys, have a wonderful Sunday, and uh, we will chat soon enough if on Instagram and also for Thursday's video. Stay tuned. All right, guys. Bye.